I'm honored to work with a fine group of young people. I'm honored to do what I love, teaching and learning. And I'm, it's just so much that has to be done. And to have the opportunity to see children grow is amazing. And I watch them from the ninth grade to the 11th, and some are in the 12th, and some are in the 10th. And they have taught me a lot as an educator. My motto is really a teacher is a student, and a student is a teacher. And that's the only way you learn. And so in the process of having an engineer program at Banneker, we had the kids take AP calculus, and they took BC, but they didn't have that experience. And liking to play with toys and making things, I realized, talking with Dr. Wallace, that robotics may be it. And we had a kid that, a, a young man, they told me I couldn't say kid, a young man <laughs> who left um, Banneker and went to Polytech. And he came back one year, five years ago, and he said, Ms. Fisher, do you want to do robotics? And I was like, robotics? I can't touch no robot. And he said, you don't have to know anything about robotics. So once he said that, I was like, OK, I'm ready. And from that day on, it's just been growing. And my what I realized is that all you have to do is take that first step. And it seems like everything else will fall in place. And out of it came Dr. Wallace, out of it came Money for Grant to do the things I need to do. And so again, I don't want to talk a lot because they are so prepared to show you what they have known and grown for the last four years. I have taught them mathematics. I have been their mentor. I have worked with them. They have been my friend. They have taught me. Unbelievable things. I never knew anything about programming. I know about programming. And things that you don't know, you just find people to do it for you. You find the people that you need to make them successful, to make yourself successful. So I found in education and reinventing myself and staying in this career um, that you just have to keep trying to find things that will make kids become successful because everybody comes with a gift, a talent, and the ability to succeed. And so in the process of doing that, I'm, I'm just I'm just elated that I had this opportunity to work with them. The robotics and engineering team competes annually in competitions um, from organizations such as FIRST and KISS Institute. And competition teaches our team how to work together outside the classroom setting, how to handle high stress situations, and how to have fun when you have last minute disasters. <laughs> um, not only do we compete in competitions annually, um, we also try to reach out to the local community, anybody that needs help, and try to help them. Recently, the Food and Nutrition Committee of our school contacted us and asked us if we could help improve the lunch that kids were being served. So what happened was we, we got together, we sat down, and we prototyped a design. It was actually an electric device. I wish we could have bought a picture today, but it was an electric device that sits in the lunchroom now. And after students eat, they could rate their lunch, whether they like the vegetables or not, the fries. <laughs> and they rate honestly from um, zero to four, zero being it was disgusting, and four being it was delicious. <laughs> and from there, the committee was, um, they're able to see every week how, how the students voted. And they changed, they changed their, meal their meal schedules accordingly. When building a, rel a reliable robot, one has to consider 
the concepts found in basic architecture and physics. Issues such as weight balancing, relocation, um, forces like stress and, stress and tension, um, torque, central gravity, all have, to, all have to come to mind when designing a robot that's going to be sturdy and won't fall apart at the competitions like we did two years ago. Um, yeah, it's embarrassing. Um, so the robot assemblers have to keep a sharp, a sharp mind when building. They, all, they constantly have to think ahead and, and look at where, what they're going to do next before they actually build. Otherwise, they run into spatial and mechanical problems. Another thing we found that's very important in building is geometry. Uh, most people don't take geom like appreciate geom basic geometry, but we found that when building, we'll, we'll often convert a rectangular sh a shape made out of beams into triangles. We'll b break it up into many triangles because we all know periods and I mean pyramids and triangles and truss designs. They all they're they're very good at relocating weight down to the ground. And, that's what we really want. We don't want weight really high. And that's where sensor gravity plays in. Um, that's a picture of me teaching programming to the, um, some of the new students in the robotics team, which we'll introduce in a few minutes. Um, and I'm going to, that's, one second, Roddy. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of our latest robots made out of aluminum and all types of sensors. Uh, it has a conveyor belt. Um, that's from a competition called First Vex. Some of you might have heard of First Robotics. It's, it's kind of a, a branch of First Robotics. A builder just builds the robot. It's just a shell. It's, it's there. It's lifeless. Programmers actually make it live. It make, actually makes it move. So programming. Um, robots are programming a compiler which um, uses uh, very, a variation of C programming, C language. Um, programming deals much with odometry in um, um, geometric and algebraic methods um, in addition to trigonometry. Um, Exactly what does that mean though? It, it means that a robot will use its sensors and it'll detect position and change of position.
I started robotics last year. I've been in the classroom for about three years and I realized that instead of just sitting there, maybe I should actually help them. <laughs> um, so I officially joined last year and I went through the competitions. And one of the things that I realized is that teamwork is really major. I mean, there's no way you could get through life unless somebody is helping you. And I didn't want to be an engineer or architect or any of that when I first started. I wanted to actually be a doctor. And I noticed that I did it for all the wrong reasons. I wanted to be a doctor because I just like the idea of being a doctor. I like seeing ER and watching all the things that they go through. But I didn't realize that I had to do all these things that I did not like to do in the ER. I was afraid that I could actually hurt somebody in the process of helping them. And I didn't want to do it. And Ms. Fisher, she felt that I had something in me that was strong and it was going towards engineering. And I didn't believe her. So I kept struggling against her and eventually I found that engineering is actually what I'm interested in.